Pro tip, you do not need to be an organized person to get a little bit more organized. Good morning, good life. Welcome back to Amy TV, where we come together to help you go after the life that you want. We all have a lot on our plate. Before we know it, we have tons of emails that we haven't replied to, the laundry's piling up, and we can't remember the last time that we did anything in the form of self-care. And then you start asking yourself, do I even know what self-care means? Do I actually even know what it means? Lack of organization can cause a lot of unwelcome chaos. So that is something that I wanna help you prevent. I feel like when we at least have a few good processes on our side, we can go a little rogue sometimes, let things go off the rails, and know that we'll be able to get back to something that is a little bit easier to manage. But without those processes, it's really easy to let the things happening around you that are not favorable, not organized, a little bit chaotic, get to you and make you feel like you're never gonna be able to catch up. So even if you're not an organized person, there's a couple of things I wanna share with you today that organized people do that even if you just integrated a couple of them into your life, they might make you feel like catching up is possible for you, even when it seems <sighs> a little daunting. So today I wanna to share seven things that organized people usually do so that you can sneak a couple of the ones that work for you into your life so you can make better use of your time and it's for mindset too. We gotta to keep our minds straight. So here are seven things that organized people do differently. Steal them all or just the ones that you like. Number one, organized people have routines. What a shock. She said routines. <laughs> I just feel like I had to say that. Is there anybody on this channel that I don't say the word routines? It's getting to be so routine. It's a meta routine situation over here. Not just morning routines, which you obviously know I'm a huge fan of if you've been here for a few minutes, but nighttime routines, weekly eating routines, date night routines, workout routines, things like that. Just finding ways to have these opportunities in your life where on a daily basis, or hopefully at least on a weekly basis, you know that you've got something that works for you. So in be in doing so, it's a habit, it's a routine. These are sort of like your baselines that go throughout your days, your weeks, your months, your years, and they allow you to do the things that are important to you. You can have negative routines too, but that's clearly not what we're talking about here. My morning routine is the thing that kicks off my day strong every single day so that I know that when I am talking to my team or I'm talking to my husband or I call my mom or there's something going on with the family or a random trip shows up that Things can happen in life, things can change your plans, but at least I was able to start on my own terms. That's just one example. There's a lot of different examples of routines, and I'm sure you can think of a few, but at least having one, in my opinion, the morning routine is the absolute most necessary. But a workout routine is super important too. When you have these and you know it works for you, it absolutely keeps you level and when things just go a little crazy you know how to get back to normal the second thing organized people do differently is write everything down I'm a huge fan of the bullet journaling technique if you haven't seen a video on that check it out it's on my channel somewhere I'm sure we'll link to it right we got links we got links everywhere but the most important thing is that your brain was not meant to be the place where you keep thoughts ideas and reminders that is what inventions are for. That is why we pay thousands of dollars for computers and iPads, for phones, and why you can also pay $8 on Amazon for a notepad that hangs up in your shower. Yes, I have done that. When you have an idea, when you have a thought, when you have a, a, a thing that pops into your head that you forgot to do or something you need to do, write it down. This is something that helps me so much because I know if I'm really truly telling myself I need more creative space in my brain, I'm gonna create as much of it as possible by not keeping things in there that do not need to hold that space. I'm not going to be able to go, what was that thing I was supposed to do? And search a file cabinet in my brain. I can, however, check my bullet journal for that task. I know I wrote down this morning while I was thinking about it and I can go see what that thing was. Write everything down. Even if you're a digital person and you want to use the notes app on your phone, or if you like to journal like me and you want to join the bullet journal bandwagon, whatever is your choice, get it out of your head. This is a little random, but I particularly 
particularly love this one and I'm hoping that uh, you'll love it just as much. Number three is categorical bins and baskets. What does this mean? One example of this is your trash. You probably do this already if you're like me and you recycle. So you've got a trash for maybe some compost or your basic stuff, but then you've also got recycling, things that you know you need to make sure you take care of that get managed the right way. I also have a little trash can in my laundry room that's specifically for those dryer sheets because I know that I am much less likely to walk it into the kitchen. That's just real life. I also have one in my closet, which is probably my favorite trash can of all, and that is for the tags on my clothes because I'm much more likely to walk out of the house with a tag on my clothes than to rip it off because I don't wanna to walk to the trash can that's in the kitchen. It's the small things, but probably more favorable than my trash cans is my laundry baskets. I cannot compute wet towels going into the same basket as my clothes. They both have to go to the laundry, but they shouldn't go together. And this also helps to make sure that all the towels get washed together and all of my clothes get washed together in their own laundry basket and all my husband's clothes are in the same basket. I also have a basket for my dog because the things that I wash for my dog, I don't want to touch. If I could prevent it from touching the rest of the universe, I would, but it definitely should not be touching my towels or my clothes. Categorical baskets are a lifesaver when you don't have time like me but you absolutely have to do your own laundry I want to make sure all the towels get done together I want to make sure everything that my husband has that's dirty gets done together it's just faster it's better the fourth thing that organized people do differently is use email organization tools you don't have to have an assistant you don't have to have anything super fancy or expensive in order to be able to keep up with your email but if it's getting a little bit out of control there are some things that will help you that are not you. You don't have to spend more time on your email for it to be organized. One tool that I particularly love is called SaneBox. It allows me to train it by putting the things that are not so important into the SaneBox and the things that are in the inbox are going to be the most important. It might take you a little bit of time to make sure that things don't end up in SaneBox that should be in the inbox, but you can also do that on your own time and you don't have to look at every single email looking for something important whenever you check it. When I only check email a couple of times a day, I need to make sure that what I'm looking at is the most important thing. The next thing, and this is something I take very seriously. Some organized people are going to take something out of a room when they are leaving it if a thing does not belong in that room that they are leaving. So for instance, if I have an empty coffee cup in my office and I'm leaving to go to the kitchen or nearby, I'm gonna take that empty coffee cup with me. If I haven't put you know, some skincare bag that I have here at my vanity, but it actually belongs in my bathroom, if I'm leaving my office for some reason, I'm gonna take that thing, I'm gonna go put it back and I'm also gonna do whatever else I was gonna do. The more that you try to put things back to where they belong as you are traveling naturally through your spaces, the more like Likely it's gonna stay a little bit more organized. Every time you move just one thing back to its origin, you are clearing clutter, which in my opinion is a good thing. Some people are cool with clutter, but you know, there, there might be a thing that is too much clutter, let's be honest. So move the things as is convenient with how you move and you'll be a lot more organized. Number six, organized people do not drop everything for a text, an email, or a phone call. Sometimes I get, I get really like, happy and also disappointed in myself, but mostly happy when I'm like, oh shoot, it's three o'clock in the afternoon and I forgot to turn off Do Not Disturb and like seven people called me. Those were seven phone calls I didn't get. First of all, nobody, nobody seven people don't call me, let's be honest. But texts and, and notifications that are absolutely not crucial, you do not need to stop everything to check them, especially if you haven't scheduled the time to do it. If you're in deep work or if you're at work or you're doing something that's absolutely not texting your friend back about their weekend, they don't drop everything for this, they make the time for it. And quite frankly, I actually, can somebody, this, I'm gonna say this on the record. Dear Apple, can you please allow me to mark something as unread in my text messages? Because I feel even more responsibility to, even if I wanna read something, cool, but if I can't get back to it, I don't wanna to forget to get back to it. And I forget my text messages all the time. We live in a world where texts are becoming more business oriented. There's a lot more tasks with friends. I don't want my friends to think that I'm just like trying to skate by by simply replying to them and not putting a lot of thought into it just because I checked the message, but then, I can't, like, it's a whole thing. It's, it's, it's this whole thing in my head that is driving me absolutely insane. But the reality is, 
I just don't drop everything to check those messages because I know I would rather spend time doing that person a justice by giving them my undivided attention than to think like, oh, I'm gonna sit here and check every single thing and get back to it immediately. I know they're not gonna get my full thoughts into that thing if I do that. You're certainly not gonna be productive if you're checking all these things, if you're answering phone calls willy-nilly, depending on how your life is structured. You know, there are people in business who have to answer the phone all the time because that has a lot to do with the lifeblood of how they make money. But dropping everything for something when you are in the middle of something else that has absolutely been prioritized and you made the time for it, arguable for absolutely everyone, you shouldn't do it. And the final thing that organized people do a little bit differently is not just use their calendar because that's not a good enough tip around here. You know I'm gonna tell you to use a calendar. Are you right? I'm right, you're right, we're all right, use a calendar. You also need to use a collaborative calendar. So let's say you're organized, or at least organized from a scheduling standpoint, and you're all, look at my calendar block life, isn't it fabulous? But you forgot to like tell your husband all the things you're doing and your kids have commitments going on. It's always good to have a collaborative calendar. Me and my husband have a family calendar, so we know what's going on there. He also sees a lot of things on the business side just because he needs to know, but that's because we're in business together. But where are those things that you can have everybody be able to look at and get a feel for what everyone is up to having that collaborative nature of your scheduled time is important even if let's say you're in college and there's not really anybody else that needs to know your schedule on a daily basis maybe just the people that need to make sure you're safe my mom has access to my travel calendar so she always knows when I'm leaving town and sometimes that has to do with dog sitting but I, most of the time it's just like I want her to know where on earth I am I mean it's just useful information about your children so use a collaborative calendar whenever it's possible if it can't be Digital, maybe it's just something that's hanging up in your kitchen for the whole family to see, whatever the case. This is very organized because it's not just showing that you are keeping track of your life and how you're spending your time, but you're trying to teach others around you to do the same. Those are seven things that organized people do differently. I'd love to hear from you. Question of the day, what is something organized that you do in your life? Share that in the comments below. What's something that you're gonna add to your day to get yourself a little bit more organized? I would love to hear from you. Share your favorite part of this video on my latest Instagram, you can head over to Atchmitastic and let me know in a comment. That's all for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it as always. Make sure you subscribe for good vibes, kiss the ones you love, and go after the life that you want. Cheers. Okay, time to look organized. We're gonna wait for the helicopter. <gasps> Wanna go back to Ohio State to old Columbus Town?